Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solars and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday the 10th of July 2025. Severe weather still an ongoing threat across southeastern Australia, a large and powerful storm system moving through the Bass Strait this morning and expected to emerge into the Tasman Sea momentarily and it, this system is expected to become a brute of an extra tropical cyclone. We're expecting strong winds, blizzard conditions, snowfall, rainfall, the whole nine miles of it over the next 24 hours across eastern parts of Australia with plenty more wind weather systems to be following in this one. Let's jump straight into the details right now. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video uh, as well. Uh, but let's get stuck straight into the system right now. You can see the low pressure uh, centre now moving north of the Bass Strait, north of Melbourne through uh, into New South Wales and Victoria. It's expected over the next six to 12 hours to get itself out into the Tasman Sea where it's going to cause more problems and it's going to solve than uh, whilst it exits Australia. We're really looking at quite a strong low pressure system here. I'm not sure why the satellite and the radar imagery is being so blurry, but you can see so much cloud and convection based activity Activity. Plenty of rainfall as well along the border of New South Wales and Victoria. It certainly is a messy low pressure system, but certainly quite a strong one at the same time. Winds are really beginning to pick up as well across the northern side of the system across New South Wales, and I'm sure you can feel it, especially if you're in one of those higher locations. Wind gusts are now really starting to pick up uh, through the uh, Capital Territory area, the Snowy Mountains area, and even up into the Blue Mountains area. You can see uh, outside of Tamworth, we've got winds already at about 50 kilometres an hour or gusting up around the 50 kilometre an hour mark, and it's also dragging in a lot of uh, more moist air from the northern parts of Queensland. I'll get into that in the later part of the forecast update as well, but we're also expecting these wind impacts to reach as far north as southeast Queensland. But what you need to know right now is across southeastern Australia, especially through Victoria and the southeastern corner of South Australia, we're expecting a showery winter's weather day. Uh, plenty of rainfall still to come through for a lot of locations, another 20 to 30 millimetres expected across the Victorian Alps. Rainfall accumulations along the Victorian coastline will be between 10 to 15 millimetres throughout the remainder of today. The northwest coast of Tasmania also expecting between another 10 to 25 millimetres throughout the remainder of today on top of the 30 or 40 millimetres that some locations have picked up overnight. And even the southeast corner of South Australia, which is in that vigorous cold pool uh, behind this low pressure system, expecting a further 5 to 15 millimetres for some locations, especially through the southeast corner, a few more light showers coming through there. And along the York Peninsula, we've still got a few more showers moving through there as well. But you can see wind observations have been quite high. But I'm also noticing a fact that there's a lot less stations on this observation map compared to where there was yesterday. We've uh, specifically lost Neptune Island. I believe they blew out after a 110 kilometre an hour wind gust. And we've also lost Threadbow, the automatic weather station there, has had their wind observations taken offline. I'm not sure if the station was, uh, or the wind uh, uh, measurement device, the anemometer, I believe that's what it's called, has been destroyed. But again, we've had some very strong wind gusts and it's obviously caused some damage to the Bureau of Meteorology's observation network. So some of these wind observations have been quite unreliable. Like I said, though, this low-pressure system moving into the Tasman Sea throughout the remainder of today and taking the severe weather with it, uh, at least for Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania, severe weather is expected to ease off throughout the remainder of this afternoon and this evening. But you might be able to see that rainfall and snowfall still expected across the New South Wales uh, high country, and we're expecting that to uh, move into the Sydney area throughout this afternoon and into this evening. Strong winds are expected to be the main threat across the Illawarra and the Metro coastlines. We're also expecting strong winds, which could reach damaging uh, fall, uh, thresholds later on this afternoon throughout the Sydney metro area and much of the suburbs as well. Rainfall, snowfall and the winds will ease off much later on tonight into very early tomorrow morning and we're expecting the conditions to be a lot more tamer across New South Wales, especially through tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon. There will still be a few showers here and there through Victoria uh, starting from tomorrow morning and easing off in the afternoon hours and a few snow uh, accumulations expected onto the higher peaks tomorrow night into Saturday morning. But all in all, we've got another 24 hours or so of this severe weather before the threat does ease off in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania and the Australian in the Capital Territory. Uh, this low pressure system will then move into the Tasman Sea, as I'm sure you've made uh, notice uh, of here. It's going to be quite a large one, definitely a strong one, that's for sure, and heading off in towards New Zealand through early tomorrow morning into early tomorrow afternoon. It will then provide New Zealand with a very big blow of severe weather through tomorrow night and into Saturday and Sunday. This will be a powerful low pressure system, heavy rainfall, damaging winds, heavy snowfall accumulations also expected throughout Friday night, Saturday and Sunday for New Zealand, followed by another low pressure system sweeping into the Tasman Sea on Monday and Tuesday. They're really expecting some severe weather over the next week or so over in New Zealand, which means that the Tasman Sea is going to be active and there will be impacts going into next week as well for New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Another low pressure system coming through. I'll get to this one in just a second. 
Now, as I've been mentioning uh, multiple times already, this forecast update, winds are the main threat. We're taking a look now at a map called wind accumulation. It's similar to rainfall accumulation. This is a measurement of the strongest or an estimate of the strongest wind gusts expected in the selected time period, which includes Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So over the next three days, the strongest wind gusts will be coming through tonight and into early tomorrow morning through the metro and the Illawarra coastline. And you can, as you can see, wind gusts are expected to be quite strong. The mountains just uh, south of Wollongong along the coastline down through Jervis Bay and through to Oladolla, we're expecting gusts there well in excess of 100 kilometres an hour at times tonight. Uh, peak wind gusts could reach 110 or even 115 kilometres an hour in some locations. Wind gusts outside of the metro area through uh, Katoomba, Bathurst, Lithgow and Penrith expected to exceed 100 kilometres an hour as well. Through the metro area in the suburbs, we're expecting wind gusts to be between 70 to 100 kilometres an hour. Still a windy night, but not as bad as what it will be further inland. Out around the Barrington Tops, wind gusts up to 100 kilometres an hour are possible, and then wind gusts between 60 to 80 kilometres an hour expected across much of the agricultural uh, regions along the foothills of the Great Dividing Range, as far north as Wollongara on the Queensland New South Wales border. Strong winds will also extend at times into the mountainous areas along the border of New South Wales and Queensland into the southeast corner of Queensland, and wind gusts could reach up around 70 or 80 kilometres an hour outside of Killarney and Warwick into the mountainous regions just in those foothills of the Great Dividing Range up there. Strong wind gusts are still expected into the mountainous regions around Threadbow, uh, Perisher Valley and Jindabyne as well. Wind gusts there could exceed 125 kilometres an hour in the next six hours and up to 110 kilometres an hour tonight into tomorrow morning. Blues and conditions are still anticipated in those locations. The Gippsland coastline as well, expecting not only abnormally high tides from this low pressure system, but winds out of the south. We're also going to be looking at peak wind gusts there up to 100 kilometres an hour. And as such, uh, there is a coastal hazard warning for abnormally high tides and abnormally high ocean levels in this region because of the wind pushing the waves up higher than what they normally are onto the coastline and that abnormally high tide threat as well. Strong winds also expected along the south coast of Tasmania. I'm expecting some pretty big observations at Mapsyker Island tonight into early tomorrow morning and also again Friday night and into Saturday morning. Wind gusts down there could exceed 130 kilometres an hour uh, offshore and gusts up to 100 kilometres an hour possible onshore through Tasmania. Strong winds also expected to continue for parts of the Air Peninsula over in South Australia. Gusts up to 60 kilometres an hour can be expected throughout the remainder of today. They'll be easing off though much later on tonight. Good rainfall accumulations also expected for the snowy mountains between 25 to 50 millimetres expected up to around 1300 metres where the rainfall will then fall as snowfall. Like I said, blizzard conditions still expected and we're looking at more snowfall accumulations for some of the, for some of the higher peaks. Total snowfall accumulations up around the 20 to 30 centimetres expected into the next three days. But if we push this number out further forward and you can see over the next week, we're expecting much higher accumulations across some of the higher peaks. More snowfall expected to come through on both Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And then snowfall just continuing to build on right out to the the end of the forecast modeling it looks like we're going to have a very snowy uh, middle part of July and into the later parts of July we're expecting some snowy conditions as well plenty of rainfall still to come in especially for the west coast of Tasmania so let's take a look at the longer range forecast right now across southeastern Australia still plenty of severe weather to talk about where do we leave it off? I think it was Monday. Another low pressure system moving out into the Tasman Sea on Tuesday. That's expected to develop nicely, but it will remain far enough offshore from Australia as to where it's not going to cause problems. A couple of days of calmer weather, relatively speaking, expected next week between the 14th out to the 18th of July before, like I've been saying in recent forecast updates, big time severe weather and strong cold fronts expected after about the 20th of July. Strong weather systems coming through on the 21st and the 22nd. In fact, this one looks a little bit too strong. I think the forecast models might have gone to town with this one a little bit too much, but you get the idea. We're expecting a strong low pressure system to move through into Tasmania or the Bass Strait at some point after the 20th of July uh, in the next couple of days there. And we're expecting a strong weather system out of that. Uh, I don't think it's going to play out exactly how the forecast models are expecting here. This would be a kind of storm of the century type thing. Very powerful system into the Tasman Sea and would cause all sorts of problems. Wind, snow and rainfall for Tassie, Victorian parts of New South Wales. Uh, so we will take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt. But again, you get the idea. We're expecting strong weather systems into the later parts of July. Plenty more rainfall still to talk about as well. And again, I would like to just take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt. Uh, rainfall accumulations will be dependent on the movement of these low pressure systems. But you get the idea. Tasmania, especially along the West Coast, expecting some very healthy rainfall accumulations. The stuff we typically see at this time of the year, up to around 200 or 300 millimetres over a two week period, which is good news because July rainfall actually checked at Mount Reed 15 millimetres to date so far for the month of July. That's ridiculously low. Uh, they average about 500 millimetres in the month of July 
and their lowest recorded rainfall on record at Mount Reed was 230 millimetres or something like that for the month of July. So they really need to kick their butts into gear to get onto their average rainfall. They will do it with the rainfall on the forecast, but it does go to show that the west coast of Tasmania are reeling for a little bit of rainfall at this point in time. Same with the southeast corner of Australia, still more rainfall to come, still good news on the forecast, modelling 25 to 50 millimetres expected across much of coastal South Australia into the agricultural regions, up to 75 millimetres forecast for Adelaide and then falls between 25 to 50 millimetres expected much uh, through much of rural Victoria, falls up to 40 millimetres expected for Melbourne and then higher accumulations expected into the elevated regions. Same deal with New South Wales, although interestingly enough, the east coast still remaining dry on the forecast. Fantastic to see they need plenty of time to dry out over the next couple of weeks. But you get the idea, still plenty more rainfall to come from these low pressure systems. This has been the first storm of many still to come. It is typical July weather. This is very normal stuff at this time of the year. And I would like to stress that at the end of this forecast period, uh, we expect this type of weather at some point every calendar year, uh, two or three weeks of just significant cold fronts coming through for the southeast corner of Australia. Some of these systems are packing a significant punch and that's why we're talking about them in such great detail. Severe weather is a threat to homes and to property. Uh, so again, make sure you do take these threats seriously. Damaging winds, destructive winds, uh, even the heavy rainfall threat that we've been seeing over the last couple of days, it can cause damage. So there's no need to be brushing it off as oh, it's winter, we expect this type of stuff. Yes, we definitely do expect this type of stuff, but it would be silly and irresponsible for us to say, oh, just because we ex expect it, we should be talking about it and we should be making a big deal about it because it is, at the end of the day, still severe weather and certainly something to be taking very seriously, that's for sure. We don't do cast on this channel, we just tell it how it is. Anyways, I would just like to briefly touch on the southeastern and central parts of Queensland. Not only are they still freezing cold, and they're expected to be freezing cold this weekend once again, but a few showers here and there through parts of the Sunshine Coast, or the not-so-aptly-named Sunshine Coast, as it has been over the last couple of months, and a few showers also extending up into the Wide Bay area outside of Rockhampton, then inland from Ogmore and Dingo. Still, though, temperatures are mild and Queensland weather is a lot more pleasant right now than what it is over in the southwest or the southeast of the nation. We are expecting that to change, though, for this weekend. Cold temperatures expected on both Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, mornings, we're expecting temperatures into the southern parts of the state to near zero degrees, especially through some of the more elevated regions. And then temperatures a lot colder again across the southeast of the state through Sunday morning. We're expecting temperatures into the Brisbane metro area to sink to about seven or eight degrees in the morning. Uh, Gold Coast will be a little bit warmer at about 10 degrees, but you get the idea. Very, very cold further in. Inland Wollongara, Stanford, we're looking at temperatures down towards zero or even below zero in some locations. Warming up marginally through Monday and Tuesday, and you can see temperatures then expected to get steadily warmer until Wednesday when they will cool off again. And then it really does depend on the movement of significantly large low pressure systems. If they get themselves off to the coast, we'll likely see some cooler temperatures. But if they do hang south, then we'll likely see a return to more normal weather across Queensland. But frosts can be expected this weekend and also into the middle parts of next week. And it is going to be a little bit cooler than what we would normally expect at this time of the year across southeastern and south central Queensland. Apart from that, though, Queensland weather remaining high and dry, especially across the north, as you would expect for this time of the year. Same deal with the Northern Territory. Not a drop of rainfall expected over the next two weeks in any parts of the Northern Territory. Beautiful weather. We love to see it. And across the northwest of Western Australia as well, remaining high and dry, as you would expect for this time of the year. I'm just starting to get a little bit worried about some of the rainfall, especially through the Wheat Belt region of Western Australia. July typically is our wettest month of the year. August can also be quite wet, and we're definitely going to be counting on some August rainfall this calendar year, that's for sure. But rainfall is now starting to fall behind a little bit through some Wheat Belt communities, and I don't want to be alarmist or anything, but we are now starting to see some drought conditions develop uh, after some rainfall deficiencies across the southwestern corners of the state and also in parts of the Wheat Belt region. Soil moisture values are not sitting up where they should be at this time of the year. Whilst some locations are definitely wetter than average, we're definitely looking at an expanding belt through the wheat belt that's now looking a little bit drier than average. So rainfall con uh, concerns are definitely going to be there over the next couple of weeks and it'd be good to see some rainfall developing on the forecast models which unfortunately isn't really the case over the next two weeks. Yes we've got that usual 30 to 50 millimeter type stuff coming through for the Perth metro area but we're not looking at any big time cold front that's going to provide us with a good drink of rainfall especially out into the wheat belt regions. Don't get me wrong I'm loving the sunny weather I'm not so much a fan of the cooler mornings but again that rainfall is definitely needed. A little bit coming through Friday night into Saturday morning. In fact, it's looking like Saturday is just going to be a bit of a miserable, drizzly, rainy day uh, through parts of the Perth metro area in much the southwest of the state. We're expecting rainfall to be nothing too crazy between 10 to 25 millimetres between Saturday and Sunday. Most of the rainfall actually easing off early Sunday morning. 
uh, but for the most part, rainfall accumulations could be a lot heavier out in the Weedbelt, especially at this time of the year. Nothing coming through Monday, Tuesday, and then something else coming through Wednesday and Thursday, but it is quite a weak system here that's really not expected to pack too much of a punch at all, and definitely nothing in the way of significant rainfall. A few showers still lingering through uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and showers continuing by the looks of things before another stronger system comes through into the later parts of July. But again, uh, I'm sure you've seen this, we're not looking at any significantly strong weather system coming through over the next two weeks throughout the southwest. There will be a few that miss us towards the south, and there will be a few that also break apart uh, as they approach the southwest, but well, this has been a bit of a trend on the forecast modelling over the last couple of weeks. We haven't seen anything strong on the forecast models coming through into the later parts of July, so now starting to get a little bit concerned, a little bit worried for some of the rainfall accumulations out to the Weedbelt. If you are in the agricultural regions out in the Weedbelt, especially if you're around the Lake Grace and Lake King sort of area, please let me know in the comment section down below what the situation is in your location. It, based off what I'm looking at right now in the forecast modeling, it is starting to look, it's, it's not dire, but it is starting to get there. Definitely paling in comparison to what the drought has been over in South Australia, but at least they're now starting to get some good rainfall, and especially for where it's needed, we've got plenty more rainfall still to come on the forecast modeling out for South Australia, but across parts of the world region of Western Australia, it is now starting to become just a little bit of a concern, and I would like to get a little bit of intel on what that is actually looking like for some of these locations. Definitely not the weather that we want at this time of the year. Whilst winter can be annoying and it can be cold, it can be awful across the southwest of WA, we need the rainfall. It's the only four months of the year where we can really count and depend on the rainfall coming through for Perth and much of the southwest. So uh, every drop does count, and uh, we're very thankful for every drop that comes through across the southwest at this time of the year. So to go two weeks without any significant deluges, which we're about to enter into a bit of a two-week dry period, it is now starting to become a little bit of a concern. And then ultimately, when it does get really dry, frosts are going to become a big concern. My Minus two at Southern Cross this morning. I imagine there is going to be some frost there. Not good for the farmers. So again, just get a little bit worried. It might be starting to get a little bit dicey out into some of those regions at this point in time. But again, we'll wait and see. And if you've got any intel on the ground, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. But on that note, that's going to have to do it for today's forecast update. I do hope you found it enjoyable or informative, hopefully both. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, goes out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not only show without them, so their support is always much appreciated. But that's going to have to do it for me today. Stay safe, stay warm, stay dry, especially if you're across the southern parts of Australia. Severe weather still coming through, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.